My name is Dan Lafferty, and welcome to my photo story of the theory of genetic epistemology. Genetic epistemology, meaning the study of the development of knowledge, is a hierarchical staged learning theory from Dr. Jean Piaget. Important for younger ages, and based on a biological basis of knowledge, Piaget's theory remains relevant for educators and parents to this day. One of the most important aspects of genetic epistemology is the understanding that children throughout the stages will have a different understanding of reality. First, more on Jean Piaget. Born in French-speaking Switzerland in 1896, Piaget was immediately interested in science, especially biology. Piaget got his doctorate of science in 1918 from the University of Neuchâtel and began studying children's reading. Piaget had three kids with his wife Valentine, two girls and a little boy, whom he began studying. He was the director of the International Bureau of Education and wrote his Introduction to Genetic Epistemology in 1949 and 1950. Jean Piaget died in 1980. These researchers all had theories similar to Piaget's or were highly influenced by his genetic epistemology. Goldberg's Stages of Moral Development, Vygotsky's Social Development Theory, and Bruner's Constructivist Theory. Piaget developed stages based on schema, which are cognitive tools, structures, or patterns of physical or mental action. Once a child acquires a schema, they can adapt that schema to suit their needs. This is how Piaget described learning. There are two ways to adapt schemas, assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation involves the introduction and interpretation of new events or objects into old schemas, whereas accommodation is changing part of the old schema to adapt to a new event, object, or environment. A perfect balance of assimilation and accommodation is the ideal state of learning and represents a good understanding of our world. This ideal state is called equilibrium. Through this unique understanding of learning, Piaget introduced four general stages of development a child goes through. First, the sensory motor stage, zero to two years. Second, the pre-operational stage, two to seven years. Third, the concrete operational stage, seven to 11 and finally formal operational years, which is 11 and up. At the sensory motor stage, kids are highly effective and focused on physical movement and learning. The child is developing his or her senses to understand their world better. A child enters this stage at reflex and primary circular reactions such as crying or sucking their thumb and leaves being able to imitate or think through some complex ideas like behavior. At the pre-operational stage, kids are now understanding symbolic representations, such as language and creative role-playing. However, at this stage, kids are highly egocentric and their knowledge is very intuitive and non-logical. Take a look at the two images at the bottom of the screen. If the liquid is poured from the short and wide jar into the tall skinny one, a pre-operational child would not understand that they are still of equal volume. Likewise, a pre-operational child will answer that the line of dots on the bottom has more dots in it simply because it is more elongated than the line above. At the concrete operational stage, a child would be able to answer the volume and jar question posed before, as well as begin to view and understand other people's perspectives rather than simply their own. Children can now classify groups of things or ideas as well as properly order them. Some people, even adults, do not progress past this stage. People at the formal operational stage are now able to theorize and hypothesize new ideas and easily think abstractly. People at the formal operations level are very logical and can sequence their thought. They are now equilibrating between assimilation and accommodation. Take the four digits on screen. If I told you that all cards with vowels on the inside have even numbers on the other side, which two cards do I have to flip to prove this reading? Formal thinkers can tell you that I need to flip the E and the 7. The E must have an even number on the back, and the 7 must have a comma. In knowing Piaget's theory and stages, we as educators have a rough checklist of what to expect from our students. 
we can begin to piece together the puzzle to enrich the learning in our classroom. Educators and parents of young sensory motor stage kids should have a rich, stimulating environment. Pre-operational classrooms should be rich in imagination and work play, and so on and so forth along the way. By knowing Piaget's stages, we can note age-appropriate lessons and challenges for our kids. Take, for example, this classic Piaget question. Imagine Piaget sitting across from a child with a 3D mountain model between them as shown. In knowing the stages of development, we can know that this is too much of a challenge for pre-operational kids, but is age-appropriate for a concrete operational challenge. For more information on Jean Piaget and his theory of genetic epistemology, please follow me tightly. Thank you for listening.